Hey, how's it going? What do we have here? Yeah, it's a little rifle I picked up in a state sale. What is it, a musket? It's a musketoon. Does it play a song? I'm coming down to the pawn shop today to try and sell my musketoon that I picked up in an estate sale. It's just something that I haven't really seen before. I paid $200 for it, just hoping maybe I'll get a big payday. OK, it definitely looks cool. Do you know anything about it? It looks like it's maybe from London. I really don't know any history of it at all. These were really popular in the 1700s, especially with the English Navy. They were a really effective weapon when they boarded a ship. I mean. Look how many pieces of glass or nails could shoot out the end of this thing. It was, point and shoot. it was made for clearing decks. So heavy, you know, that it's all metal. It would make an incredibly good club like this. Yeah. And that's what they used them for. One shot, turn it around, and start beating people with it. A musketoon is just what it sounds like. A shorter, higher caliber musket. They were designed for maximum damage at short range. As you can expect, pirates loved them. There's definitely a few problems with it. The spring that holds down the frism is missing. And we have a busted stock here. The whole lock mechanism looks in rough shape. Do you think it's old? Um, I think it is. But then again, they fake things and put them in rough shape so they can resell them. Antique gun collectors love rare weapons, but there's a lot I don't know about it. I need to know if it's real, and I need to know how this condition affects its value. I wish there was a way I could prove these cracks actually happened in battle. That would really raise the price. So did you want to pawn this, sell it? I, I want to sell it. My problem is I just don't know enough about this thing to even make you an offer at the moment. OK. So if you don't mind, I'd like to make a phone call, get someone down here, have them check it out, and we can go from there? Sure. OK. All right. Let me give him a call. Great, thanks. Well, I think it's cool he's called an expert in. That way we really know what I have, if it's just a reproduction or a fake, or if it's the real thing. All right, how you been? All right, how are you? This is what I called you about. Oh, cool. My name is Sean Rich. I own Tortuga Trading, and I specialize in antique arms and armor. This is a pretty good-looking blunderbuss. That's a blunderbuss, not a musketoon? The musketoons were the earlier forms of the blunderbuss. You know, as time went on, they got more refined. They used these things for almost any practical application. They would use them for ship-to-ship -ship combat, but more importantly, as a personal defense weapon on the coaches. Wealthy people always traveled in a coach, not on a horseback, so they needed guns like this for protection. How old is the gun? I would say this would date to about 1750. Sweet. What's really nice is the side plate, because it depicts a panoply of arms. That's very ornate. This was made for somebody wealthy. OK. There are some issues I want to point out, though. The restoration process on this would be very difficult for this reason. The wood has started to warp. OK, so it's now bowing out. So to try to put this back is going to be very, very difficult. OK. The hammer is a replacement of the period. So it's not the original. original. No. The average gunsmith is going to have a very difficult time trying to restore this gun. Sometimes these parts have to be handmade in the same way that they were made back in the day. OK, so with all that, <laughs> what's it worth? As is, it's worth probably 1,000 to maybe 1,500. Thanks, Sean. Absolutely. OK. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. All right, take care. Um, what are you looking to get out of it? Well, I'm thinking 1250. <laughs> Think again? <laughs> How about 1,000? No, because I'm probably going to sell it for 1,000. I'll give you 600 bucks. 750. I don't like things like this walking out the door, but any more than seven, I'm going to let it walk. OK. That's right. more than I got in it, so. All right. Chum, you want to write them up? Yeah, let's do this. Meet you over there. OK. We sell on 700, so I'm walking away with 500 bucks profit, so I, I, I'm loving it. Hey, fellas. What do we have here? I have a four or 500-year-old pirate chef. So this um, could be Johnny Depp's. <laughs> I would like to sell this chest today because I have absolutely no room in my house for it. I think it could be four or 500 years old and it's in very good condition and may be worth a ton of money. Damn, it's big. <laughs> Where'd you get this? I got it from a friend of mine down on the Gulf Coast. Pirates was in that area extensively. There's probably been pirates for as long as there's been ships. 
And famous pirates like John Lafitte did operate along the Gulf Coast of the United States at one time. That said, the whole idea of a pirate's chest is sort of a myth. There basically isn't such thing as a pirate chest. There's a sea chest, OK? I guess it could be a pirate's chest if a pirate owned it, OK? Right. But there's no real way to tell that. This is wood. You can open this up with a hammer. Right. OK? So it wouldn't be something for treasure. Well, it could be off a pirate's boat, because it's a little sort of hidden compartment down here. It has several secret compartments. Well, that's where they kept all their booty. That's cool. Have you searched those secret compartments for gold? Yes, and unfortunately, I've found none. <laughs> Way back in the day, there was no banks. There was no safety deposit boxes. So it doesn't surprise me, but it does make it neater. I don't know exactly what it's for. I mean, usually a chest is for traveling. What are you looking to do with it? Well, I've got to get rid of this thing because we've got to make some room. How much are you looking to get? At least a couple of grand. I know someone will probably know how old this is and where it's from. Do you mind if I give him a call and get him down here? Oh, please do. Every once in a while, I get a sea chest in the store. But I've never seen one quite like this before, so I want to get it checked out before I make an offer. Do you have any idea what you think this is? Well, I know it's an old chest. It's off a boat, and it could be four or 500 years old. OK. In the 18th and 19th century, you were on a ship. You didn't have closets, so you would have a sea chest. Now, a sea chest normally is wider at the base because it needs to sit flat on the deck and not move around as the deck is moving. They are made out of wood and brass because iron rusts. You know, that's not a good thing to have on board ship. One of the things you have here is a lot of iron strapping. That's not normal for a sea chest. Oh, yeah. Oh, and the secret compartments. This is all real typical of this kind of chest, but it's not a sea chest. These were used in homes, and this comes from India. Those leaf-shaped latches are very typical of dowry chests. And so they would come as part of a marriage the wife would have all of her goods in here. The secret compartments, you'd have jewelry, that jewelry. sort of thing, kept in. This thing's probably at least 400 years old, though, right? No. 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 The manufacturing style is, is what you would right. have seen in the 19th century. You know, it's 100 to maybe 130 or 40 years old. Well, it sure is almost half as old as I said it was. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all right, thanks, Mark. I would have loved for this to have been a 400-year-old sea chest, but an Indian dowry chest, still pretty cool. It makes a great decorative piece, and people will love the secret compartments. You know, I told you two grand, you know, uh, half the age, half the price, a grand. First off, a sea chest is much cooler than a dowry chest. How about 400 bucks? Uh, give me 500, I'll walk away smiling. Well, I'll be happy, done deal. How about I give you 450 and you walk away with a grin? 500, big smile. All right, 500 bucks. Deal. All right, write them up, jump. I'm walking out of here today with a big smile on my face because I got 500 bucks and I don't have to lug this big thing all the way back home. So, awesome. Earlier, a guy brought in a black powder peg leg gun that he says is from the early 1800s. Corey thinks it's some kind of movie prop, but I'm hoping it's legit. So I brought in my buddy Alex to help me out with this thing. I mean, I'm looking at this thing, and frankly, I'm stumped. <laughs> we have the Swiss Army knife of pirate legs. <sighs> I mean, intrigued is an understatement. Let me see this thing. So this is a peg leg with a gun in it. Wow. Look at this thing. I have never seen anything like a peg leg with a flintlock in it, ever. This thing is insane. So, want me to tell you if I think this is real? Yeah, I just can't yeah. see this being a viable option for somebody. All right, well, here's what I know. The lock, it's got the crown GR for King George. King George died in 1820, so that's period for sure. But that cloth on there is... Yeah, well, that's a machine stitch all yeah. the way across. Huh. Ah, man, this is tough. So is it real? Well, 
I don't think it's a movie prop. I think it's much too sophisticated for it. I mean, it looks like it would function. Nice. Right? Nice. Sweet. Here's the thing. This barrel is rifled. So if I was going to make a movie prop, why would I bother putting a rifle barrel in it? Rifling is a twist that's grooved into the inside of the barrel. And what it does is it takes a pistol ball and it spins it, sort of like a football spins on a spiral and goes straighter. So if you're going to make a movie prop, why use a rifle barrel? Just use an old piece of pipe. What would happen is if this was a British officer's leg and he was injured in battle, you're out to sea for months. Maybe the ship's carpenter made this. And they use recycled materials from products that they had on the ship. <laughs> Wow, these are um, pipes for the ramrod in a brown vest musket. It's kind of an ingenious design because, you know, if you had a pant on and the bottom of your pant came down to the ankle, you'd have no idea that there was a pistol in there. So if you were in the middle of a battle, you need only bring up your leg that far and boom. Awesome. Right? Awesome. Boom. You just pull this little lever and the pistol discharges. So he wants 15 grand for it. I can't answer that yet. You know, I got to research it, and if it fires, that'll help the value a lot. Can you meet us at the range in the morning? Sure. All right, I'll see you tomorrow, guys. See you tomorrow. Take care. If Alex wants to shoot it at the range, I think that will do nothing but help the value go up. I'm all for it. So we're on the shooting range to see if it actually fires. And if this thing is legit, I really want to buy it. What do we strap this to to shoot it? <laughs> His leg. <laughs> sort of like shooting like a handheld rocket. It's kind of big and cumbersome, but we'll see if it works. All right. I chose some targets, some cantaloupes, because this is a close-range weapon. There's no way to aim this. You just sort of point in the general direction and pull the lever and hope for the best. Blow it up the leg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being conservative with this gun because I don't want an accident to happen. I'm using a little bit of powder and a smaller ball. Little pressure, less of an accident. Lots of pressure, big accident. So I'm going little. All right, here we go. You ready? All right. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Got a hit. Went right through it. It fires. Yes! Now I've done my job, and it's between Rick and the cell. Does anyone else want to fire it? Sure, I'll shoot it. <laughs> nice. You don't want to shoot it? No, not at all. Why not? A little some sweaty pirate leg <laughs> was in there, and I'm just not into it. So I'll let you go ahead and go. All right, Rick. All right. All right. Ready? Here we go. Flesh wound. I got a flesh wound. <laughs> it fires. It's legit. I want to get it for the right price. I really want this thing. It is really cool. It's one of those things I put in the shop. People will want to take pictures next to it. So what do you think it's worth? Well, it, there's no other peg leg gun out there to compare it to, but it really works and it has an ingenious design. So. <sighs> What crazy collector out there wouldn't want this? I, I would say probably somewhere in the twelve to $15,000 range. Awesome. It's pretty amazing, Rick. I've never seen something like this. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Good luck, Alex, Dennis. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. So what would you take for it? I'm looking at 15. No, 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 no. There's, there's no money to be made. Come back at me. Eight grand. Ten. We go nine? This is a thing that looks great in the showcase. I think I might, might be able to find some crazy guy to give me a lot of money for it, but it's going to sit around for a long time. Call it nine and a half. Split the difference. 9,500? 9, you got a deal. It's one of the coolest things I've ever owned. Rick and Corey were laughing when I first came in here. I'm the one that's laughing now with a pocket full of money as I hop on my one leg out of here. It's one of the weirdest things we ever bought. Well, I know it's weird, but that's why it's so great. I mean, I'm just telling you, if you're 12 years old, would you think that was the coolest thing in the world? No. A call just came in from a guy selling a boat. It sounded cool, but no one else was around, so I just decided to go check it out myself. 
Uh, I thought you had a boat. It is a boat. Does it float? No, it is a float. I thought a boat floats. This boat floats in parades. I'm confused. Shiver me timbers. I called the guys down at the pawn shop today to check out my street legal pirate ship. I own a company, and we specialize in making these boats for bachelor parties, parades, and rallies. I'd like to sell it today because we'd like to start our next bigger one. I'm asking 250000 Why don't you come on aboard? All right. What do you think? It's pretty sweet. Can you show me all the features? I'll show them to you. We've got those black pipes. They pump out all the fog you could ever want. It's got the front stage. You come down the stairs, you got center stage. We've got a wet bar here. And then when we go to the top right up here, we've got lasers that come out of there that paint the whole floor green and red. We got a big screen TV on the back that films the entertainment, whatever's happening in the boat, so the people behind you can enjoy what's happening. Well, that might be dangerous if I was on here partying. It very well might be dangerous. I believe that. Is this legal to drive on the street? Absolutely. It's got license, registration, inspected. It'll go 60 miles an hour down the highway. We took a one-ton GMC chassis from a Chevy truck, took the body off, put a steel substructure underneath it, and we covered the whole thing with 100% African mahogany. It's got a 350 Chevy carbureted motor pushing about 300 horsepower. All right. You think I can take a picture and send it to my boss? Absolutely. A pirate ship, you can actually drive 50 miles an hour on the highway. This is awesome. Let's take it for a spin while I'm waiting for him to reply back. You got it, brother. Let's go. Chum's phone just keeps on going straight to voicemail. I'm sure it's all right, dude. Here, I'll text him. Don't buy the float. Send. Here, everything will be fine. Don't worry, I'm sure he's not going to buy it. He doesn't have any money on him. But he's an idiot. Woo! I'm on a boat! Sup, ladies? I feel like captain of a ship right now. It's a good look for you. <laughs> I can't wait to show this to everyone. If I can make a deal, Rick will think I'm the man. Pretty awesome. Right on. You like it? I do. Uh, what are you trying to get for it? $250,000. <laughs> Two forty. I'm thinking you can rent this boat out for a couple grand a night. I mean, it's a gold mine. I'm pretty sure Rick will want it. I can give you a hundred thousand bucks. Man, my bottom dollar's one ninety, hundred ninety thousand. That's giving it away. One hundred and ninety thousand is giving it away. Giving it away. Um, I don't think my boss would let me spend that much. That's it. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I had a good time, though. It was fun. Well, I'm glad you had a good time, but I'm driving you all over this place. Why don't you call your boss? I could do that. Let's see. Well, he, he might want it. Do it. It looks like he texted me already. Do not buy the float. That was Rick, my boss. He said not to buy the float in a text message. Huh. That's it? Yeah. I'm gonna have to pass. Well, that's bull. Whatever. Oh, sorry, man. I can't believe Rick didn't want this pirate ship. If it was up to me, I would have bought it. We've never had anything in the shop like it before. So what do we got here? Oh, this is my antique chest. Did you get it off a pirate ship or something? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Coming in the pawn shop today to try to sell my antique chest. I'm looking to sell this chest because we're redecorating and it doesn't match anything. I paid $2,000 for it and I'm hoping to at least get maybe double my money. So do you know anything about it? Not really. To me, it looks like it came from a ship or a stagecoach. I think this is what they call the bullion chest where they transported gold and silver. They were extremely heavy so people couldn't run off with them and they were locked very well where people couldn't break into them. OK. I can tell it's old. It's hand wrought iron. It's um, hand hammered rivets. I mean, and the rivets are wrought iron. They're not steel. The moment I saw this chest, I started drooling. I've never seen anything like it. It is super unique. Was there anything inside it? I haven't been able to open it. Have you had a locksmith look at it? Because you got a key right here. Yeah, I had a couple try to open it, but nobody was successful. <laughs> 
Did you try and shoot it open? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I mean, it's got a little hole here and a big hole in the back of it. I'll be honest with you, I'm intrigued. I want to know what's inside that damn chest. I mean, I mean, yeah, especially if you paid that much money, you wouldn't want to put a crowbar on it. No way. I'd really like to know what's in it before I made you an offer. To be honest, I'd like to know what's in it before I sell it. Before we negotiate, we have to know what's inside. Because if there's an important coin or document, it could make it worth a lot more money. I have one guy I think can get into this. Let's give him a call. Let's see if I can get him up here. And we'll what? go from there. We'll go from there. That's all I can tell you. Sounds fine to me. I've been in this business for many years, but I don't think I've ever had anything come in here that could be as valuable as this chest. But it depends on what's inside. Oh, man, this is the chest. Yeah, this is it, man. I'm an expert in antique arms and armor, and I've been collecting since I was 10, and I've been dealing professionally for over 20 years. So what are your concerns? Um, yeah, I just need to get it open, and you can tell me how old it is and what it's worth, and maybe we can make a deal. I just, we're baffled. We're, we're in a fog right now. Normally, when someone brings in an object, we know what they have. In this case, we have no idea because we don't know what's inside the chest. And none of us want to start throwing out numbers until we know. It definitely predates the 20th century. This is not even 18th century. This would be early 17th century, even late 16th century. This was the typical form for the strong boxes. And because they didn't have a banking system back then, this is a real treasure chest. This escutcheon plate on the front was to deter a would-be thief to try to break into this, but this was false, completely false, just as a kind of a, a fooling technique. And I can also tell just by the patina that this wasn't a recent bullet hole, okay? okay? It may not have been from the 17th century or the 16th century, but it's definitely, you know, a musket ball hole. Not only is this thing real, but the hole was made by a musket ball, and that's the kind of thing collectors dream about. Um, you know, your mind kind of goes crazy wondering how that got there. You know, was there a guy that was trying to break into this thing? Did he pull out his flintlock pistol and shoot it out of frustration? You know, were they traveling with this treasure chest and maybe being chased by highwaymen? I don't know, but I mean, the mystery is there. So you think he can open it? Well, now granted that this is a working key, and I'm hoping that it is, chances are I'm gonna be able to get it open. But there's only one way to find out. Sean thinks he can open this thing. Let's see if he's as good as he says. This key is going to operate a very intricate mechanism that's contained within the lid of this chest. Now, I'm not going through the front. This is the brilliant part. And how they made this and came up with this idea back then is just mind boggling. This is actually where the key goes. And this is a little hidden by a spring. The key would go into the top, okay? Now this may or may not work because you need a lot of strength to open these things. Okay, lift up. It's empty. Yeah. No, like, pirate scrolls or anything. Well, not what I was hoping for. A little disappointing. I know everybody was let down, you know, once we opened this thing and there was nothing in it. But, you know, the chest itself still is very, very valuable. It's very rare. And the fact that this is in wonderful condition, hasn't been cleaned, hasn't been restored, it's still a very valuable item. Well, if you can see the mechanics of this, one key turns and moves all these locking bolts that lock it underneath this lip. The technology in this box was so far ahead of its time. The designer had one key motion to affect eight bolts. I mean, it's just, it's mind boggling. Watch your fingers. So how much is this thing worth? 50, 60 bucks? <laughs> it would be worth. Um, there's not a lot of these out there. You know, how many still exist? I don't know. In an auction setting, uh, anywhere from, say, seven to 12,000 is conservative. And the fact that it's got a bullet hole in it, you know, that, that kind of adds to the flavor. 
Realistic street value. I would say anywhere from five to seven thousand is realistic. Well, thanks for coming in, Sean. Absolutely. Anytime. Hell, I'm tired of pussyfooting around with this chess. It's time to negotiate. Okay, what do you want for it? I understand that could get as much as seven, maybe five or six, and we can negotiate that. Um, I'd give you like four grand for it. Four thousand cash go a long way, my friend. I don't disagree with that, and I really don't want to bring that back home. Well, if you don't want to bring it back home, I'll give you three thousand. <laughs> I'll bring it back home for three. I refuse to go higher than four thousand dollars. The street value on this thing is five thousand dollars, and that doesn't leave a lot of room for profit. I, like I said, I just really want it. I just want to cut to the chase, and that's what I can give you for it. If four thousand is a firm offer, firm offer. All right, we have a deal. All right, let's go up here. We got to do some paperwork. Honestly, I'm really happy with the deal. The chest is amazing, and I got it for a really good price. Now, I just gotta go put some gold in it. <laughs>